So hello everyone. This is a review on linear algebra. Uh, so um, yeah, letters, sometimes small, sometimes larger scalars. So M uh, was the dimension of the input space and was the number of training data points. Um, an order one array C is a column vector. That's with uh, two dimensions. Uh, we write uh, write in this way, C1, C2 forms the column vector uh, old C. Uh, and C sub i is the ith dimension or ith com component of um, vector C, column vector C. Um, we uh, use the transposed um, operation, which turns um, a column vector into a row vector and a row vector into a column vector. So in this case, um, C transposed consists of the row vector consisting of C1 and C2. In order two array A is a matrix um, written in this way. So we have uh, in this case six components, A11, A12, A13. Um, a21, A22, A23. So the first uh, index in indicates the row and the second one the column. Um, sometimes we also write it uh, in this linear form A11, A12, A13, and then semicolon for the start of a new row A21, A22, A23. And um, so, th so you, we use the um, semicolon. Uh, sometimes the colon is used to select columns or rows. For example, A uh, co uh, sub uh, column comma one uh, is uh, the first column of the A matrix, and um, A one column is the first uh, row of the A matrix. Mm, so if A is an n times m dimensional matrix, then the transposed A transposed is an m times n dimensional matrix and uh, the columns of a are the rows of a transposed or the rows of a are the columns of a transposed um, so um, here um, we show the a transposed um, of the matrix a before um, for the elements as uh, noted before so a11 a21 a12, A22, A13, A23. So this, uh, yeah, this is, is the transpose of matrix A. Um, so now we have three rows and two columns. Addition of two vectors is simply the addition of the elements. So if C equals A plus D, then CJ is, uh, so the component CJ is the component of A, J plus uh, DJ. Can also multiply vectors with a scalar, so with a simple number. So C equals K times A is a vector with C sub J equals K sub times A sub J. So each component is simply multiplied by the scalar. And the same with the matrix. Uh, C equals uh, K times A is the matrix of dimensionality of A with C I J equals K times A I J. We can define the scalar product, also called the dot product, uh, sometimes written as A dot C or A transposed C. Um, and it's uh, the sum over the product of the components. And this is a simple number. Um, so it's a special case is A transposed A is the sum over the components of A to the square uh, is the same as the Euclidean length of the vector squared. Um, yeah, a matrix consists of uh, many row vectors. So a product of a matrix with a column vector consists of many uh, scalar products of vectors. So if A transpose is an n times m dimensional matrix and C is an m dimensional uh, column vector, then D equals matrix A times vector C is an n-dimensional column. Vector D, uh, where D 
the i is the sum over whole j of the product a i j to c j. You can also multiply two matrices. Um, so if a is an n times m dimensional matrix and c is an m times k dimensional matrix, then b, uh, which is the product of a times c, is an n times k dimensional matrix where uh, d i k equals the sum over j of a i j to c j k. So there are different ways to memorize it. So the uh, typical way is to say the uh, yeah, you, you multiply each row vector of A with each column vector of C um, with a normal dot product. Um, you can also uh, multiply from the left, so a row vector with a matrix. Um, so uh, I wrote it here as C transpose equals D transpose A. So D transpose is a row vector, C transpose is a row vector, and then uh, uh, CJ. Uh, equals the sum over i over d i times a i j. There's also uh, an outer product, which is a special case of a tensor product. Um, so you can also multiply um, a column vector with a row vector, and uh, that gives a matrix, an n times n matrix, where a i j equals d i cj. Uh, so here's an example. So here's a column vector times a row vector, d1, d2 times c1, c2, c3. And then you end up with all the, the products of uh, the components. So d1, c1, d1, c2, d1, c3, d2, c1, d2, c2, d2, c3. So it's called an outer product. Yeah, we already talked about the transposed um, of a matrix. Um, and if you do it twice, you get the original matrix back. Uh, more important, if you have a product of two matrices and take the transpose of the product, it's the transpose of the individual matrices, uh, but the order is changed. So here it's A, C, it's C, A. The unit matrix, uh, often denoted by I, is a special matrix. Um, so it's a square matrix. The number of rows is the number of columns, and um, the diagonals have ones, and every other entry is zero. And if you multiply any matrix with an identity matrix, you get the matrix back. There's also a diagonal matrix where you have non-zero elements only on the diagonal of the matrix. The unit matrix, of course, is a special case. Um, sometimes um, you have something like an inverse of a matrix. Um, the one condition is that the matrix must be square, so n times n. Uh, and if uh, this inverse matrix exists, uh, then we have A inverse times A equals the identity matrix, but also A times A inverse equals the identity matrix. And if the corresponding inverse exists, then the inverse of a product, A times C, is equal to the inverse of the individual matrices, again written in uh, reverse order. So C inverse times A inverse. There is something called an orthogonal matrix. Uh, it should be really called maybe orthonormal matrix because uh, the length is normalized. So R is a quadratic matrix, and it's an orthogonal matrix if all columns are orthonormal. Um, and it follows that all rows are orthonormal as well, which is maybe non-trivial. So R transpose R equals the identity matrix, because they are mutually inverse. Um, R, R transpose is the, inverse, uh, is the identity matrix, and R inverse is the, is the same as R transposed. So now uh, this is a little bit uh, challenging and might not be known 
to all of you, but it's a, a very powerful, very important uh, decomposition of the matrix. So consider n times n matrix x, um, and this can always uh, be factored. So no conditions on x, doesn't have to be symmetric, doesn't have to have any special properties. Um, it can always be uh, decomposed into three matrices, uh, and it's typically written as the product e u times d times uh, v transpose, and uh, u and uh, v are orthonormal matrices. Um, u is an n times n matrix and v is an n tim times n matrix. Um, and d is an n times n ma diagonal matrix, so you only have non-zero elements on the diagonal. Um, with and these diagonal entries are called singular values, um, and they are all larger than zero, so they're called d i. Um, I equals one to r tilde, and r tilde is the smaller of the two numbers m or n. And the u j, so the columns of u are called the left singular vectors. The v j, the columns of v are called the right singular vectors, and the d j, the entries in the diagonal matrix d, are the singular values. Here's a graphical illustration. So we have matrix X and these blue dotted lines indicate the columns. Uh, it's um, decomposed into this matrix U, which is square, which has uh, dimension n times n, and it's orthonormal. Uh, then um, uh, D has these, is this diagonal matrix, which is zero except on the diagonal, so it's not a square matrix in this case. Uh, and um, it's ordered according to the size or uh, the, the magnitude of D. So first you have the largest one and then smaller ones. And the um, U columns, of course, are also uh, ordered uh, accordingly. And uh, V transpose, so it's a transpose of the V matrix. Uh, it's an uh, M times M matrix and has also ortho orthogonal columns, orthonormal columns, so the inner product equals one or zero. So this is, uh, I mean, these are nice matrices, orthonormal matrices are always nice to deal with, and it's a factorization of, of the matrix. Um, and if you, for example, if some of these components here are zero, the smaller singular values, then you have a compression of the matrix in a low rank. So this is something new, maybe you want to look it up in some uh, uh, some textbook on linear algebra. Uh, I, I added an appendix on different interpretations, but I think it's more confusing uh, for the beginner than helpful um, uh, because a vector sometimes has a very specific interpretation uh, and sometimes people associate some invariances uh, if a coordinate system is uh, changed, but uh, all of this is not really important to the lecture, so I don't cover it, but you're welcome to take a look if you are specifically interested in this aspect. Okay, thank you very much.